Now in this video, we'll go with the step-by-step -step method of the IPsec process and also we'll get into some of the basic configurations. So the entire IPsec process goes in a five different steps and we'll talk about those five different steps and mostly we'll see some of the basic configuration here as well. Now before we go ahead, let's try to get into some of the basic overview of some of the IPsec protocols which are used. Now there is something called IKE, Internet Key Exchange. Now the main job of this IKE is used in the phase one. We'll talk about phase one in detail in the next sessions, which is responsible for creating a secure channel between the two routers. Now again, there are two other protocols which we use. We call it as ESP and authentication header. Now these two protocols are used in the in the IPsec process of phase two, which is responsible for actual encrypting and authenticating and securing data. Now the actual transmission of or applying some security policies happens in the phase two. And these are the two major protocols which are responsible for do this. We can use any one of this depending upon the configuration. We'll get into that in the phase two configurations. But whereas in the phase one, it will help you to build a secure channel between the two endpoints. So probably the complete process goes in the five step configuration here. You can see the first step is the host A has to send the interesting traffic to host B. Now the meaning of interesting traffic here is, let's take an example. In my scenario, I got a host here 10.1.1.3 is trying to communicate with 10.0.2.3. Now I want to ensure that any traffic going between these two hosts should be in an encrypted format. Now it has to be secure. Now I want to ensure that the communication process between these two has to be secure and that is what we call as interesting traffic. Now when we say interesting traffic means which traffic should or what is the kind of traffic you need to apply the IPsec parameters. So you want to secure your information. But there are some other traffics like let's say this user is also trying to access some other resources maybe on the internet. So which means he's not trying to communicate with this host here, but he's trying to go to internet, maybe accessing some public service on the internet. And I want to ensure that the traffic which is destined for internet should not, uh, should not get encrypted or uh, should not, uh, the my router should not apply an IPsec parameters on that. I want this traffic should be in a clear text. So that is what uh, exactly defines interesting traffic. So uh, the interesting traffic can be defined with some ACL, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to define some ACL statement which matches the this source and this particular destination. And if it matches the source and destination or whatever you define in the ACL, if it matches, then only it is going to apply the IPsec. If it not matches, in that case, it is not going to drop, but it's going to send in a clear text. So that is what we call as interesting traffic. And by default, if you do not define any interesting traffic, by default, all the traffic leaving the interface will be encrypted automatically. And that is something you may don't want in most of the scenarios. So the first step will be, we need to define the interesting traffic, what traffic from where to where has to go in, a, in an encrypted text has to be secure. Now, once we define the interesting traffic, the next step, the, there are two major steps here. Now the second and the third step. Now in the second step we call it as a phase one and the third step we call it as a phase two. Now the major difference between the phase one and the phase two is in the case of phase one it's going to establish a secure channel between these two devices. So that's that's what happens in the phase one by using some IKE policies. We'll talk about this more in detail in our next video. Uh, what is IKE policy and what are the methods it uses. So establishing a secure channel between the two, that's what phase one is going to do. Now, whereas in case of phase two, now in case of phase two, what happens is once the secure channel is established, now it is going to negotiate the IPsec uh, protocol parameters, what to use in order to provide a secure communication between these two. Now the actual, uh, actual applying of the security policies or IPsec policies are done in the phase two, but before the phase two, it's going to apply the policies. The phase one has to be successful. Now, once it builds a secure channel in the phase one, then in the phase two, it's going to apply the IPsec parameters. Now, once it is done, then probably uh, we call them as IKE phase one and phase two. And once it is done, then it is going to exchange the information via IPsec tunnels. And finally, once 
once the information is exchanged it's going to terminate the tunnels so let's let's get into the command line so in my scenario what i'm going to do is we'll talk about we'll take one example here the default lab setup i got a router one which is trying to communicate with router two now i want to ensure that any traffic uh, going from one end to one six shared one dot network that is my lan interface of the router one we need to ensure that when it is trying to communicate with 192.168.2. network, I want the router or I want to apply the IPsec policies. So which means the communication between 1.0 network to 2.0 network should be in a secure fashion and any other communication. Let's say 1.0 network is trying to communicate with some other interface loopback or, or any other communication, maybe anything which does not match the ACLs it should be sent in a clear text. So we need to define the interesting traffic. So that can be done by using an ACL here. So I'm going to create one ACL with the access list 100. And right now I'm not defining any specific uh, protocols like that. I'm simply saying all the IP traffic coming from one dot network. And if it is going to two dot network and it is matched in the ACL 100. So probably we'll be using this ACL in the later on steps. But in the first step, we are we are going to define our interesting traffic and uh, whatever the traffic which where you want to apply the IPsec parameters. And then on the router 2, I'm saying any traffic coming from 2.0 network going to 1.0 network has to be applied with IPsec parameters. So let's go to the command line here. I got the same diagram here and I'll go to the command line. Let me define the rule. So what we are going to do is we are going to build an IPsec tunnel from router 1 to router 2 that, that's our job here and we want to ensure that the traffic from 1 dot network to 2 dot network should uh, should be encrypted format so it should be secured now the first step we need to ensure that before you create any IPsec tunnels or GRE tunnels we need to ensure that there must be a reachability from router 1 to router 2 interfaces now right now I got a default routes uh, which allows you to have a reachability. I got a default route pointing towards the router 5. So this is the same thing what I have been using for my GRE labs or DMVPN labs, almost the same same configuration and the IP addressing I'm using here. Now we are going to define the interesting traffic and I'm going to say access list 100 and I'm going to say permit IP traffic and any traffic coming from 1.0 network and any traffic which is going to 2.0 network. So that will be considered as my interesting traffic and anything do, that do not match this ACLs or anything, whatever you write in the deny statements, probably that will go in a clear text. Now, similar way on the router two as well, we are going to define some interesting traffic and I'm going to say that any traffic coming from 192.168.2.0 network and if it is tested for 192.168.1.0 network. Now we can specifically define some protocols or specific uh, services in that but I'm just going with all IP traffic between between the two routers now once we define the interesting traffic now moving on to the next step the second step uh, is IKE phase 1 and phase 2 so we'll talk about IKE phase 1 and phase 2 probably in our next videos